Discord. Okay. Um, the the problem with week three assignment is that they really don't give you a lot of information to go by. No. It, it's very brief information. They don't even give you a lot of copy. So as an instructor, I thought that that was not good enough for the students. So maybe I'm being a pain in the butt, but I put together information uh, called Scuba Blue, which is my alternative to the kayak rental. And I supplied you with a lot of pictures, or should say more pictures, and I supplied you with more copy. So what I'm giving you is the option of using mine, which gives you more to work with. Does that okay. make sense? Yes. So a lot of people have had, you know, issues about this because, you know, again, the, the course has one thing and I'm giving you something else. I'm trying to do you a favor. I mean, I'm, I, I'm, maybe I'm making more trouble for you than it's, than I should, but I'm really trying to do you a favor by giving you that. Right. extra. Go ahead. So that we can learn more. It's not that you can learn more, but if, if, if you have copy, if you have real copy, that is the kind of copy you would find on a trifold brochure. That's the first thing. And if you have a number of images to work with, you're going to find it a lot easier to build that. Okay. So I just called it scuba blue, but you didn't have to use scuba blue. You could have modified it to where it said, what's the name of the logo? Um, Aqua Excursion. Yeah, Aqua yeah. Excursions. All you had to do is change the name from Scuba Blue to Aqua Excursions. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. So, or, or you could have just uh, you could have used the Scuba Blue logo. I mean, I didn't have a Scuba Blue logo, but you get the idea. I mean, it's 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 just basically copy, and you could have put that copy in there. And even if it said Scuba Blue in the copy, see, I would have understood entirely what was going on. It wouldn't have been a problem. Okay. Okay. I will finish it up then and send it in. Okay. Are you okay with Are you okay with the process involved in doing all that? Yeah, I, I had to go back and watch the recording a couple of different times to understand what you've done with the logo, mm -hmm. but I understand it now. Just remember that this is a production course. This isn't a course on graphic design. So tonight I'm going to critique some stuff. Um, Jennifer, hello. How are you? Good. I'm, uh, Carla, how are you tonight? I'm good, thank you. Good. So um, this is really a production course. So I don't get into as in-depth a discussion of design techniques as I try to stay focused on production techniques. Here's what I know for a fact. You guys are going to have, before you're done, several courses that are more directed towards design. And I would strongly suspect that those courses are going to be focused heavily on the design stuff and not so much on the production stuff. So this being a production course, what seems very important to me is to get you comfortable with the idea of these production techniques because they are critical for you and they are things that you need to know and somebody should walk you through them. So that's the, that's the general flow of this course. So I want to make sure that I focus it on that. Okay. I, I do have one really quick question. Go right ahead. Is it the week three assessment where you have to um, like touch up your week two yeah. project based on what you had said? Yeah. So what if you just said, good job, it's perfect? I think I went back in and I put some notes in. Okay. I, I might have put notes back in. I, I think it was week two, which was your, your business card, your stationery and stuff, right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I actually went in. I actually went in and I uh, made some notes for everybody. And okay. essentially, what I was hoping to be able to do tonight was to get everybody to send me stuff for critique. And I'm going to critique some of the stuff tonight. And our critique tonight will be sort of an informal critique where we can more or less discuss these things. And again, as I say, I'm I'm I, I I'm sorry if I'm disappointing all of you. But my feeling about this is that this is a production course. And from a design standpoint, I'll, I'll tell you some things design-wise about it. But what am I really looking for? I'm looking for all the techniques that are, that are supposed to be used to create a production piece that will work for a printer. 
there, there's what I'm focusing on. So if I see that you've done these things correctly, what am I going to say to you? Good job. <laughs> right? I mean, I know I don't mean to sound stupid or, or arrogant, but that's what it really comes down to. You know, yeah. that's what I'm looking for. It may seem very simple. I told you from the beginning, this is essentially a very simple course. You just basically need to learn to do things right. And once you know how to do these things right, you've got the, the general gist of this course. There, it's not it's not totally simple because you have to learn how to manipulate color properly. You have to understand about images, and you have to understand that when you're dealing with images, there's certain things that there's certain requirements you must meet, and you have to make sure that when you submit files to somebody who's a printer, that you do these files correctly. And I've seen, uh, and again, this is not you know to criticize anybody per se, but this is a class, and I've seen a lot of mistakes. Because it's, most of you really don't understand all this stuff, and you're learning it, right? Right. right. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions or any other comments? No. Carla, Jennifer, April, any? No. Good. Uh -uh. I'm good. You're all good. So, what am I going to do tonight? Uh, I have a number of pieces that I want to critique, so we're going to do those critiques. We're going to talk about them, and I'm going to discuss them with you. I've had a number of uh, – Catherine, hello. I've had Hi. a number of uh, instances where different things have occurred. In, students have sent me files incorrect. So I want to be able to go through the packaging process again, and I want to go through the PDF process again just to make sure everybody is clear on them. I've also had a number of people telling me that they had problems uploading files. So when something like that occurs, I want to show you an option, okay? I'm going to show you an option, um, Dropbox. I'm going to show you how to work with Dropbox. That's something that you guys should know about. Uh, and I'll get to it in a little while, and I'll show you how Dropbox, wor Dropbox works. You can sign up for Dropbox for free. And what you can do essentially is you can drop very, very large files into Dropbox and you can send invitation emails to the person who you want to go in and get those files. I do it all the time. As a matter of fact, my demonstration tonight is actually a project that I'm working on for somebody and I'm going to show you how I submit that to him through Dropbox just the same way as you would if you were working with an instructor and you were running into problems with your um, you know, submit, submission process. So see again, all these things have to do with technical production things. And I'm showing you these things. Some of them fall beyond the scope of the course, but the more you know about this stuff, the better a designer you're gonna be because to design something, you have to be able to produce it. You don't, don't for one minute expect that you're going to design something and hand it off to somebody else and they're going to produce it for you. That's just not the way it's going to work out. You're going to design much of what you produce. And you're going to produce much of what you design. So you really need to know how to do this. And, and if you really go back to the, the, the title of this course, it's color and production, essentially, right? Right. So, Really, I am trying to focus on things that are production stuff. I hope that other instructors will cover this stuff too, so that you know you it gets burned into your brain solidly. But I'm not exactly sure that they will. I don't know what other uh, instructors will cover with you. I do know that in my particular case here, I feel the responsibility to be sure that you are pretty clear on this stuff. So that's why I, I really focus on all of it. Okay. okay. Yes, all right. Any uh, questions or any comments, anything before we continue? I do have a Dropbox, but, um, and I've also got Google Drive, um, but I, um, I use Dropbox with another guy down at the gallery, down at the art gallery where my husband has his, um, studio where he paints, and, um, Am, am I in a Dropbox? Well, I'm, I'm a member of Dropbox, but I'm not necessarily in a Dropbox with anybody by you, I don't think. I, I, no, I, no, no. I, I am with somebody else um, down at the art gallery Okay. where my husband paints. Okay. So he uses Dropbox for sending 
art sample or something photo? Yeah, his, his friend does, and he turned me on to Dropbox. Okay. That way we could um, be able to put stuff in there for each other to see because he can get it out of mine and I can get it out. You know. Yeah. He, oh, definitely. And there yeah. are times when you have files which are huge, really huge files. And uh, hold on. Sorry, I had to oh, get that. That's okay. I'm here. This is Carla. Yeah. Um, anyway, I um, I appreciate the the critique that you've given this on that you're being really detailed. And by the way, I finished I finished my submission except for the logo. I need to still work on that. Okay. Well, you got to listen. Here's the deal. You have until you have until the end of the day Saturday to fill, to do all this stuff in. Now I'm gonna have to. If you're late, I'm gonna have to deduct some points for you being late. But you know that happens from time to time. And at least I know that you're gonna hand you're gonna try to hand your work in. At least you know that if you hand your work in, I will honestly and openly grade it for you and give you some kind of a mark on it, other than incomplete. Right. Okay. So yeah. So you got till the end of the day Saturday. That's that's really the deadline, the final deadline to get all your stuff in. There's the also Kira. Available. I don't know. Have any of you tried working with her at all? That's what I was going to ask. She's available all the time because I'm like really behind. Oh I'm never yeah. Behind. She should be sending announcements to you, and you should also check announcements periodically to see if I put stuff into you or if she's put stuff into you. Yeah, I need to check that. I've been mm -hmm. working all week. <laughs> and you can try to give me a call. Uh, and I can try to help you too. I appreciate that. Okay. So um, here's what I want to do tonight. I want to do some critiquing, and I have some stuff up here that I want to critique. And um, you'll notice that I have a number of these things are are um, PDFs, and I have one InDesign file. Chet sent me an InDesign file, and I also have something I believe that Chet did. Uh, I think this is Chet's. Uh, who's this? No, it's Tori. Tori uh, sent me this. And this is a package file. Now, the first thing I want to talk about since we're doing critiquing is, and this is nothing, nothing, to, nothing to criticize Chet about per se, but this is something that happened quite a few times with students this, this, in this course. People don't seem to understand that an InDesign document is not the same kind of a document as a PDF is. So you got the PDF sitting right here, and you got this InDesign document. A PDF document is pretty much a self-contained document. So what do I mean when I say it's self-contained? It has yeah. the ability to embed in it the fonts that are necessary to produce the document. It also has the ability to embed in it all the images that go into the document. So you can get all of that in a PDF document. And if, it op if you open it up in Adobe um, Acrobat Reader, or if a printer opens it up and works on it, uh, you can actually go to production with a PDF. The problem with Adobe InDesign is it is, it is not a self-contained document. It is a document that is based on links. So if any one of you send me an InDesign document sitting here? Yeah. The InDesign document essentially is his project. Now, I can open that project and I can kind of look at the project. But the project is sort of like a ghost or it's a shadow of its former, former self. Because the pictures aren't really there. And the fonts will only open up if they're fonts that I have on my computer. And if the fonts aren't on my computer, and understand something, I have a PC, you guys probably have Macs, right? Yeah, we have Macs. You guys got Macs, I got PCs. And, and the problem with fonts is they vary from Macs to PCs, PCs to Macs. So sometimes you'll work with fonts that I won't have on my computer. The option is that the, the, um, the program InDesign will then substitute the fonts. So what happens is then your document changes. 
So by packaging the file, so you, so do you, you get the basic concept here? Is that a standalone InDesign document is kind of a train wreck. If you just send it to me that way, it's, it's, it's largely useless because it needs its support element in order for it to function properly. Now, when I say, when I say support elements, let's jump over here and let's take a look at this one. This is a packaged, uh, a packaged InDesign document. Uh -huh. You have your InDesign document right here. You have this folder called links. And when I click on this, there are all the pictures. There are the pictures that are used in the document. Mm -hmm. Now let's go back. I also have document fonts. If I double click on this, look at that. There are the fonts. Now I might not be able to open those fonts on my computer because they may not be uh, computer based fonts for PC. They might, might be fonts that are for a Mac, but a printer could, could, could open them up and he could have put this whole document together and he could uh, look at that document and he could produce that document. So why do I want you to package the document? Let me go back. The reason that I want you to package the document is so that you prove to me that you understand the process. The process is not that difficult. We did it once already. We're going to do it again tonight. But the point I'm trying to make here is that by sending me, let me go back one more time, by sending me this, just an InDesign document, if I were to try to open this, I'd get I'd get warning messages telling me that they can't find the links to it. And when they say the links, the resources like the logo and the pictures. And then if I don't have fonts on my machine that are correct for what's being used in the document, my machine will do one of two things. It'll either show like red highlighting over the fonts telling me that the fonts are not correct or they'll substitute the fonts. And if they do either one of those things, I don't have a functioning document. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Okay, so it is absolutely essential for you to understand uh, that this course is really all about preparing you to be able to professionally deal with the documents that you create. Whether you're creating them in Photoshop, Illustrator, or InDesign, there are very specific things that you need to know to do because these documents are all independent and different. And when you're dealing, did, was there a question? No, I was just going to add that when you send something to the client, they're not even going to have like probably Photoshop and InDesign, the InDesign collection to where. Right. Absolutely. Where, yeah. Right. So they, would want, they would want a PDF. Yes, and exactly. here's the thing that, here's the thing that I, I want you to understand. I've also been kind of a, a stickler on when you send me PDFs, send me PDX F's with the proper printer marks. Now, why would I bother with that? Because you could argue, well, you know, I'm sending you my, I'm sending you my art. I'm showing you what my art looks like. Isn't that good enough? Well, not really. And there's a reason for that. We can all figure out that you can send a PDF, like a printed sample for somebody to look at without putting printer's marks on it. But the bottom line is I want to know that you know how to put the printer's marks on. And I, I want to know that you know the right printer marks to put on because we did two different types of projects here. One of the projects we did was a multicolor project, a Pantone project, where we had three individual Pantone colors. And the marks that go with that are different than the marks that go to a process job. And I wanna see you prove to me that you understand those processes. Right. Not because I'm trying to be a pain in the tail, but I want you to prove to me that you know what's going on so that you can walk away from this class learning something solid and I won't have wasted your time. If those are spot colors and not the, the, the process colors. The process colors are where you're working with four color process. Right. The spot colors are where you're working with one, with two, or three individual exactly. single solid colors. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. And the marks are different. The marks that you need are different. Yeah. So, so that's what it really comes down to. Are you understanding that process? That's what, yeah. we're, that's what we're tr really trying to establish here. Okay. Yeah. So I just want you to, again, I understand where I'm coming from here. I'm in, a, I'm in, a, in my opinion, I'm in a color and production course. I'm not in a design course. 
Does design enter into this? Yes, of course it does. But what is my focus and what is my, uh, what, what is my interest in it's this? Production. What, what do you think my interest should be here? Color and production. Exactly. I want to make sure that you guys understand in, in a simple, elegant yeah. way exactly what you need to do to produce these files properly. And that's what I'm looking for. So if, if I look at what you do, and I'm not criticizing the layout, it's only because I'm not that interested in it. And I know that may sound a little ridiculous for an instructor to say, but I'm interested in something else. I'm interested in, are you producing these files properly? Are you doing the things that are required? Are you paying attention to the details that I'm giving you? Even when it comes to some of you guys have gone in there and have not changed the colors of the original logo like I asked you to do. I mean, I said, to ch I said to make the colors two different blues. I've had at least four or five people send me with the brown and the, uh, and the burgundy. And I mean, I, it, it just sort of suggests to me that maybe you uh, really didn't watch the video, but then you did because you, you, you changed the colors from uh, RGB, which is what it was originally, to the process color. Yeah. But I mean, I, I mean, th these are small details, but from a production standpoint, those are the things that I was looking for to see how well you follow my instructions. Mm -hmm. And that's what I grade on. It's, just, yeah. you know, that's, that's basically what it is. So if I look at what you did and you've got the right marks, you've got the bleeds correct, you've got the, uh, the fold marks as well as the crop marks. If you've got all that done, then you get full credit. And I say, good job. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I, like I said, some people, well, you know, you, you didn't tell me, you didn't tell me what to do. Maybe you didn't do any, maybe you didn't do anything wrong, you know? And if you didn't do anything wrong, maybe you could go back and take a look at some of the other pieces that you did during the mod, and maybe you could do improvements on them. Right. Or if you want, you submit the work to me tonight. We take a look at it, and maybe I can give you some instruction, and you could go in and you could improve visually what you're doing. So if you take a look, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about eight people here, nine people that have sent me stuff uh, for me to critique. Uh -huh. so, so I'm going to try to critique all these things. Again, I'm mostly concentrating on the technical aspects of this, uh, and I'll talk about the technical aspects, but I will touch a little bit on design. Now, have any of you had design courses yet in, in, this, in this school? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, so you guys have some sense of some of the things that you think about, some of the criteria you think about when you design things. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, so again, did, when you had those design courses, how much time, and, and be honest, how much time did they spend concentrating their efforts on the design aspect of a piece, and how much did they spend on, cre on, on the, uh, the technical or the uh, production aspects? Well, no, no, hardly any production. Well, there, this, that's my point. Now, let me ask you this. We'll turn it around. In my course, how much design did I do and how much production did I do? Hardly any design. There you go. So you see, this is what I'm trying to tell you. That's why you really look at the name of the course. It's color and production. I'm trying to focus on a very specific thing here. And it's very important for you guys to understand that because what you want to walk away with is the, the area that we cover. This is something, believe it or not, this isn't something that's like unlimited and you're just going to have to suffer through this every time. This is a very finite area. And the things that you are going to be doing here, you're going to largely do in a modified way for every project that you produce in print. And that's what this is really all about. We've done almost everything in this course has been print. Right. Okay. So again, we got four weeks to go and we have to make sure that the, the very specific stuff is understood. So, you know, I do, I do want to talk a little bit about design, and I, and I like design. I'm a designer. But my, but my real heart is telling me, okay, you're not being a designer here, Bill. You're being an instructor. And your job is not so much to, you know, focus on design as it is to focus on production. And if I focus on design, I'm taking away from time spent on production and jipping you. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'm going to run through a few of these things, and then I'm going to show you, I got this assignment here, um, it, it's this folder, and I'm going to zip this folder. What this folder is essentially, it's a project that I'm, I've been working on for about a month and a half, 
and uh, I have to submit some of the work to the client. So I am going to use that as an opportunity to introduce you to Dropbox and how Dropbox works. So you're going to physically watch me upload this to Dropbox, and then you're going to send, watch me send my invitation for my customer to go and get that um, from Dropbox. That, yeah, from Dropbox. That's the reason I'm doing it is because in the future, if any of you run into a problem with submitting your work to instructors, uh, there are other ones that you can go to, but Dropbox is free and easy. And if you have a problem, you tell your instructor. You don't even have to tell your instructor, actually, because once you go in and do this, you send him an invitation to go get it. He goes and gets it automatically. That's mm -hmm. why it's such a nice one to work with. Okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me start by taking a look at some of these pieces. Let's get this thing going here. Click on that. Bring it in. All right. So now we have our Aqua brochure. So this is our first Aqua brochure. Now, the first thing that I want to point out about this from a technical standpoint is that he does have, this is, uh, who is this? Katrin. This That's is, this is yeah. Katrin's job. Katrin, this is you, right? Yeah. Okay. So Katrin, here's the deal. You have your registration, right? And this is not just for Catherine. Everybody look at this. Pay attention to what I'm going over here and, and, and try to understand where I'm coming from because part of the thing that you're going to do this week is you're going to package and produce this final version. Okay, so Catherine, there's a couple of things I noticed technically. Mm -hmm. First of all, first of all, uh, you've got all your marks out here. Mm -hmm. Okay, you've got your grayscale and you've got your color bar and you have your registration marks. You have your crop marks. You've even got your crop marks for your bleeds. So all that's indicated, and it's fine. You've got mm -hmm. your fold marks. So it's it, technically, it's all there. Mm -hmm. Now, when we run into problems here is, see how you got your logo clipping there? Uh-huh. Okay, that's got to be fixed. you got to clip on your logo. That oh, logo. okay, okay. You know what that is, don't you? Yes, I do. What is it? I, um, when I was resizing it, I... Messed up the box? Yes, I did. Ah, there you go. So you're going to go in and you're going to fix that box? Yes, I am. Okay. And that's, it's no big deal. It's, look, here's the thing. Right. When, when you do stuff like this, when you do stuff like this, in reality, uh -huh. you would be working in-house and you would have somebody look at this and check it. And, and somebody would point this out to you and send it back to you. You'd make the adjustments and you'd send it out. All right. In this particular case, I am your person that is doing this checking for you. Right. Okay. And again, I'm not, I'm not getting into whether or not from a design standpoint, this is good or bad. I will talk a little bit about what I see here. Okay. okay. First of all, um, I think probably this logo should move up a little bit, although it's really not that bad there. I just think that, I just think that the Aqua Excursions logo probably should be up higher and the Aqua Excursions Dive Adventure should be lower. That's something that I think just makes more sense. So you might want to just reverse those two. Okay. Can I ask her a really quick question, Mr. Sweeney? Yeah, go right ahead. Um, did you put on top of your columns, did you put like inside left and stuff like, like that, how it showed on that um, video thing when you were creating this? No. No? Okay. You don't have to do that. I, you're, are you talking about something you saw on a video? Yeah, on in the... Um, no, reading. No, the, 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 remember one thing. Remember one thing. Just, just like me as an instructor, that video was trying to instruct you on something. Okay. So they were using whatever, whatever jag they could come up with to help make it work for you visually. Okay. And okay. also to make it work for you mentally. All right. Okay. I was just wondering if maybe that's why each of the sections were down a, a little bit versus being up towards the top. No, she just. It's what, it, what we're talking about here is now we're getting into the world of design. Okay, and from a design standpoint, her picture looks real good. I just question as a designer whether the logo would be better placed higher and the Aqua Excursions placed lower. That's my opinion. So that's the first thing. And again, design. We're not talking about technical no more. We already established that technically she's got this thing nailed. Okay, now there's one other thing here, one other big problem, and that is with this excursions here. I am not sure that you went about this the right way. Okay. Um, I, I, I might I don't know whether I demonstrated this or not, how to create that background. Mm. Did I show you how to create that background? Yeah. 
Okay, you did not follow my directions. I can tell you flat out you didn't. And the reason I know that is because that excursions is a standard, what's known as a standard outline. And how do I know that? Because the fill is being choked. It's being strangled. Well, what I had done was put a, um, a, a stroke around it. Yeah, it doesn't work. You cannot yeah. do it that way. You, you okay. should learn never to do that. Okay. okay. You should okay. learn never to do that. That is a very bad thing to do. Um, what you do when you make a stroke on something is you use the um, appearance palette. And okay. you can, you can uh, use the appearance palette and you can create a fill and a stroke and you can move the positioning of a fill. and a stroke. I'm, I believe it's the appearance palette. Let me just go here for a second. Go to window. Uh, appearance. Oh. Uh, what file? Let me open something. Okay. Open something. I'm going to open a can here. All right. Okay. I just got a piece. All right. I'm opening that. Yeah. Okay. So do you see how the appearance palette has a stroke and a fill? Oh, okay. Okay. Now, if I were to create letters, let me quickly show you this because this will only take a minute. All right. All right. This I'm is Bill. B I L L. Bill. And okay. I'm going to make it big. Come in here and I'm going to make it 72. Okay. Okay. So I got a nice big bill there. Okay. And I'm going to make it, I'm going to actually make it a color, make it red so you can see that. Okay. It's my nice big bill red. All right. Mm -hmm. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on the stroke and I'm going to throw a stroke on it, a black stroke mm -hmm. and hit okay. Boom. Okay. And now I'm going to pump that stroke up to five point or whoop, no, 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 wrong one. Go to five point, five point. Okay. Oh. See what's oh, happening? Oh yeah. Okay. So what's happening is it's strangling the fill. The stroke is fat strangling the fill. The right. very easy way to fix this is to remove the stroke right here uh -huh. and then just go over to the character or to the appearance palette uh -huh. click on this, add a new stroke. Oh. And now I have a stroke and I have a fill and I'm going to make that stroke. I'm going to actually take that fill first and I'm going to click on that fill and I'll make that fill red just so that it's red. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is, you see how I've got this stroke here? Uh -huh. I can click on this and I can make this one, two, three, four, five. And again, I'm strangling my, you see how I'm strangling it? Right, right. But I want you to look at this. You guys familiar, you guys are familiar with the, um, with Photoshop, aren't you? Yeah, with Photoshop, but yeah. I've never used the appearance palette. Well, oh. now you're learning about the appearance right. palette. And this is not as much production as it's more design, but I'm, right. I'm taking a detour to show you. How you you remember how the the layers palette works in Photoshop? Things yes. That are on higher layer appear in front of things on lower layer. Okay. Right? Am I right? Right. Right. Okay. So what do you see on the highest layer here? I see the stroke. So the stroke means that that's the strokes in front of the fill, correct? So you need to put it in back of the fill. That's a girl. So I click on this and I drag that up there. And now look at my nice. Uh, uh, now watch this. You want to see something insane? Yeah. Let's go and let's now make this fill. Let's go six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. <laughs> I can make that stroke as big as I want, and I still get beautiful letters. Okay. Okay. I like that. Yeah. So there's a little technique that I just thought I'd throw in there right now. Yeah, because again, cool. this is something that you really need to learn about. And I think probably right. the way that you want to do this is make that stroke about four point. Uh -huh. yeah, that's What's probably too small. Let's make it about eight. There. That's probably a nice stroke. Yeah. So again, see, I get a beautiful stroke and you get a nice fill. Right. I like that. That is not what you did, correct? No, that's not the way I went about it. Your I Honor, I rest my case. Going through the gradient yeah. with a stroke, I believe. Right. I, I, I rest my case. I like that. Okay. So okay. there's there, from a technical standpoint, is the problem with that. Now, right. let's go to the back panel. Basically, okay. all your copies on the back panel. And it don't look too bad, except I will tell you one thing. I sent you the revise, right? I don't know. Now, this is the one. Doesn't matter. This is just look. We're having okay. a discussion with these things, and I'm okay. going to talk about what I. Like I it. So it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now you have this logo on the front. Uh -huh. This is actually bigger on the back. Mm -hmm. So I would have probably made that logo logo a whole lot smaller on the back. Okay. Yeah. All and right. maybe what I would do is I might have moved the aqua excursions above at my email dot aqua dot com. I might have moved that down. I might have moved that up. Something more like that. Okay. Okay. 
Uh-huh. I, again, you know, I'm not I'm not so interested in the design aspect of this, other than you do a nice job, which you more or less did. Uh, another thing I'd like to point out to you is that you have fairly nice column width. Your column width gets a little tiny bit wide here. What you got to keep in mind is that you don't want your copy to run too close to the folds. You're getting okay. very close to the fold here and here. So okay. I would have tried to make that column width just a little bit narrower. Okay. And I'm going to tell you, this is a very common thing that I see students do. They make okay. their columns too width, or they don't think about the fact that this is going to fold. And you don't want text to run over a fold or run into a fold. And Mm -hmm. another thing you don't want is you don't want text to run up to the edge or, you know, bump into the edge because then it'll clip off. Uh So you got to remember that, you know, there is a thing called um, negative space or white space. And don't be afraid of negative space and white space. If you handle it correctly, your piece will look beautiful. That being said, overall, this is really not too bad. Okay. All right. So let's go on to the next page, which is your center spread. And your center spread is essentially okay, although it looks to me like you're a little bit short on your on your um, bleed here. Your bleed could have come over a little bit further and down to those lines. I think it's probably a little bit short, although I think it would technically work because it looks like it's close enough that it would work. But it is it, – you see what I'm saying? You're a little bit short there. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. And again, if I take a look at this, you got to watch this width. I would have, I would have probably, if this was me, I would have made this width a little bit narrower, okay? okay. And then okay. I would have been able to make up the difference by less space in here. I'll tell you what I think. I can't be, I can't be certain of this, but I think what you did was you put a paragraph return in here. Um. You remember doing that? Possibly, yeah. Yeah. You don't want to use paragraph returns. You want to go down and start a new paragraph, and you want to use space after. Okay. Space before or space after. Never add space with paragraph returns. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, I I like the idea that you have this going across the two panels here because this is a center spread, and Mm -hmm. you open this fairly quickly. Uh, This, I would have probably put some kind of an effect on the text in order to make it a little bit readable, a little bit more readable. Uh-huh. You can put an outer glow around it. There okay. are effects in InDesign. I've done it. You can do it. Okay. Okay. Other than that, though, I mean, this is fairly clean, and it works fairly well. Good uh-huh. job overall. So when I say to you something like good job, okay, uh, it's because you've more or less got it done. Now, one thing I wonder about here, and I guess it visually really doesn't work too bad, you have this go over to the fold here, and then you have this go short so it doesn't bleed off the page. Um, well, that probably would be okay. Right. What happened was this went all the way across, but the reason I did that was because this got so faded over here. So that's why I went ahead and, and brought this picture in and yeah. put it on top of the coral reef picture. Because That's fine. That, like, I don't have a problem with that. All I'm right. saying is that the way you did it was you have it go to the fold. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. okay. And then you have a white space at the top and you have a space similar here and a space similar here. So it actually works okay. But uh-huh. that's something that, you know, is kind of iffy. But I think yours is going to work okay. One very, very, very minor detail. Uh-huh. I noticed that your picture and your picture do not match each other, align each other at the bottom. Oh, okay. I can't drag a guide out to show you, but this is a little higher than that one. If you're okay. going to do this, this should probably align with that photo Drop it down a little bit. presentation. Okay. You see what I'm talking about are very, very minor little issues from a uh-huh. design standpoint. And again, because my main interest in this is whether from a production standpoint, you did it correctly. And uh-huh. from a production standpoint, you did. Okay. But now that you know that, you still have a few little design things that you can think about and you can maybe uh-huh. work on this to make them look make this look a little sweeter. Right. Right? And uh-huh. this thing here, there's too much of a space here. I would move this whole thing up a little bit. There's just too much of a space there. Yeah, I was wondering about that. Yeah. Wondering. And you know another thing, a small detail, you see the cap height of that T? Yeah. I would align that picture probably to that cap height of the T. 
okay. and then move that up and make those little minor adjustments. And, and what you'll end up with is a much cleaner, more geometric presentation. Right. Okay. Okay. And be careful of these margin widths. You, you're, you're right at the cusp of being a little bit. Right, right, right to the edge. Okay. So what do you think everybody? Any, any other comments? Looks good. Catherine, are you um, good with this? Yeah, I'll, okay. I'm going to make those adjustments and I'm going to get it cleaned up. Okay. So yeah. now is that what you guys are looking for from, a, from the standpoint of creativity, having a little bit of a discussion about that? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'll close. Let's close this one. And let's go back and let's see what the next one is. All right. So this is uh, Lindsay. Let's drag Lindsay's in and see what Lindsay sent us. Okay. So we again have an aqua excursions. And she used her own pictures, it looks like, which is very like that. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it's actually a nice photo, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, and her aqua excursion, I think her colors, I like the colors that she chose. It looks more or less like she followed my directions on this. Um, her, her copy is maybe a little bit wider. I would have probably done this. I would have probably gone aqua excursions, broke the dive adventures down to... So it's Aqua Excursions Dive Adventures. And then she could have made the text even a little bit bigger. Okay? Uh -huh. That's what I would have done with this. Mm -hmm. Okay? Also, uh, it looks like she got a picture from the web. I, I strongly suspect that the resolution of this picture isn't enough for her to do what she wants to do with this. Is it okay? In this case, yes, it's okay. But in reality, it might not be okay if this were a real job. Okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Now, I, I will say this for her. I like the width of her columns here. I think her column widths are pretty good. However, I do not like her text. I do not like the font that she chose at all. I would, I would, I would stay away from fonts like that. My opinion as a designer. I mean, I mean, at this point, we're talking exactly my opinion. I would, I would not use fonts like this. I would use something very clean and very readable and very corporate in appearance. Something more along the lines of the Aqua Excursions dive that you have here, this kind of stuff, or a sans serif font. I stay away from stuff like this because it's, uh, you know, in my opinion, it's a little too hokey. So, but that's my opinion. And another thing, what is the, what is the first thing that you notice here? Anybody notice what's going on here? What's wrong here? The bleed? No. Bleed's there. What's, what am I, where am I? Look where I am. The white? No. Yeah. And what's wrong there? Is that open you're going to tell us? Something's missing. Oh. Uh, uh, the crop the mark indicators. Yes. The fold oh. indicators. Yes. Okay. She has no fold indicators here. So that's incorrect. So she should fix that. From And again, now we're entering into my world. From the standpoint of, of production, she does not have her folds indicated there. And that's something that definitely must be there. The reason that it is like that, I think, is because she used the marks and bleeds and the, and the marks on the um, uh, PDF. She did not use the PDF. Or she didn't use my template. I think she might have used my template. It doesn't look like she put a slug into this either because there's not enough space around it for a slug. It looks to me like she used the, the uh, default settings in uh, PDF, and that is why that those crop marks or those score marks are gone. That's assuming she used my template, which I think she did. Okay? Okay. Does that make sense to you guys? Mm -hmm. uh, let me come over here and let's take a look at the inside. So here's the inside, and uh, all right. So there's a couple of technical problems here. Again, she has no she has no um, score marks, uh, no fold marks. So we don't know where this thing's going to fold. That's a problem. Um, the, I think she probably went a little overboard with this text going uh, across two panels like this. I don't mind doing it a little bit, but I think she's got it. I think she's done too much. I think she's gone too far with it. Uh, so that's one thing I would change. Also, I think she the spacing between these lines is very bad. I think she needs to probably, it looks again like she set that line and then went return and then return and set that line and then return, return and set that line. So I, I definitely think you got to, all of you have to avoid doing that. You don't, you don't put in returns for spacing. You put in space okay. after space before. Okay? okay. That's the way to do it. And then this way you can control it and you can make it look the way you want. 
All right, I see two very, very big no-nos here. Number no. one, you got this photo which runs against another photo. It should have a border. You should have put a border around that photo. A nice little black border would have been beautiful to set that off from the background image. See what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Okay, and also check it out. The picture is actually over top of some of the copy. Yep. So from a technical standpoint, you gotta be a little more careful about what you're doing. And this copy here, I'm telling you, is very close to the score. It's the, the margin or the width, and you got a lot of space here. So you could have narrowed this quite a bit and you could have made it go a few lines down further and it would have been a lot nicer appearance. And if you're going to make, and, and I think this is actually wider than these are. See what I'm saying? See how, see how wide this is? Yeah. See how wide that is? Look at That's wider, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So it's not necessary for it to be like that. It could be, it could be adjusted in. So from a creative standpoint, I think it's just a matter of, of uh, being a little more careful with the way you set your elements on the page. I, I kind of like the way she's set her elements on the page, more or less. I just think that she's not using spacing well enough. Oh, and another thing, uh, I showed you how to move these uh, bullets over, and I showed you how to move these bullets over. She needs to do that. Those bullets should be moved over. They, they don't look right there. And I think, again, she's using return spaces in here. That's got to go, and she's got to use space after and space before. And maybe come come in with the like the Australia here and the Fiji soft. Maybe make them bold or something so that they stand off the uh, other copy a little bit. So there's subtle little things going on in here that just need to be cleaned up. What do you guys think? Okay. Does all that make sense to you? And yeah. you see where I'm going? To, uh, why I'm saying this? Right. Yeah. Any uh, comments? <laughs> no. Okay. Let's get rid of this. I do have one question though. Go right Where ahead. This is our last live class. Would you be interested in talking to a printer? And if anybody has any questions they can ask. Would I be interested in talking to a printer? For the class sake. For the what? For the class. Like if anybody had questions as far as the, the technical print production aspect, they could ask a printer. Oh, you, you, I, I, I completely recommend that you talk to printers. Because my dad is a printer and he has been watching every class with me. Yeah. And so he's willing that if anybody has any questions for him, they could ask him. Oh, so okay. you're saying, is he there now? Yeah. Okay. Well, put him on for a minute. Okay. I'll go grab him. Get him. Yeah, definitely. Has he watched? Oh, she's gone. <laughs> Yeah, she's going to, uh, I don't know who that was. You know who that, does anybody know which uh, girl that was who's was getting that, the father? Was that Carla? No, this is Carla. Oh. <laughs> um. Jennifer or April then? Jennifer, Jennifer. Not me. It's not okay. April. Okay, so it's Jennifer. So yeah. Jennifer, just so that you understand what's going on here, I think you all do. Jennifer's going to get her father, who's a printer. So we can actually get to talk to a printer a little bit. Let him, actually let him talk to us. And we'll, we'll take a look at one of the other pieces and we'll let him kind of join the debate as well. That's great. That's a cool thing. You, yeah, guys, are real, you guys are real lucky. Yeah. You get to talk to a printer. All right. Let me see. So we went through Lindsay. We're going to look at this one here. This is Tori. Here's Tori's. Okay. So there's Tori's. All right. <laughs> Okay, so Tori's actually looks pretty good. Uh, yeah, I like that. Yeah, Tori's actually looks pretty good. She went out, she got her own pictures. She's got everything bleeding. She's got all the bleeds. She's got the, um, the, the bleed indicator. She's got the crop marks. She's come in and she's placed the fold marks on here. I, this photo looks like it actually goes to the fold. It's a little hard to tell. Yeah, no, it does. Because see right here? She might have actually gone a little too far. She could back off it just a touch. What I like about this is, she, she's, she, once again, she's a little tiny bit closer to these edges than I would like. I would probably like this to be moved over a little tiny bit. 
Um, there's enough space here that she could do that. But it actually looks pretty clean and pretty nice. And he, I don't know what you guys, did you guys all get, Jennifer, are you back? I'm just walking in the room now. Okay. Your father coming? Um, no, he's moving a couch. <laughs> oh. So. He's not going to join us? Um, he might in a little bit after he's done moving the couch. Okay, that's fine. Um, so anyway, uh, did you guys get the link that I sent you showing you how to silhouette that dolphin? Yeah. I got the link. I just have not watched it yet. Oh, okay. Did anybody of you watch? Did any of you watch it? I didn't see that. You can't see what? I didn't. I didn't see that link. Oh. It was in the announcements. Also, did you get the email I sent you with it? Did anybody? No. None of you got the email that I sent you about the link. Didn't get no, it. I just seen the link in the announcements. Oh, I sent an email. As soon as the class ends, I'm going to send another email to make sure okay. you guys are getting my emails because I sent an email. I did a video that showed how to do this. One of the students, I don't know whether it was um, Tori uh, or somebody, uh, might have been Tori because I guess Tori uh, was the one who who sent me the picture of the dolphin. So if she's got the dolphin, do any of you got that dolphin? No. No. Nope. Gotta be Tori. So Tori did this at any rate. Here's the deal. So she wanted to ask, she wanted to me to show how I silhouetted the turtle. Remember the turtle in mine? Right. All right. So she wanted to see how to do that. So I said, well, you know what? Uh, she goes, oh, and by the way, I have, a, um, I have a, um, a dolphin, and I'd like to use the dolphin. I said, well, send the dolphin to me in an email, and I will do the silhouette, and I will create it as a YouTube video, and I'll put it on YouTube, and you can take a look at it. So I did that, okay? Now, bear in mind, I had, had oral surgery the day before. Ooh. And I, was, I don't feel very good tonight. I'm, I'm not at my best tonight. But I was really, really out of it on that day. Because <laughs> the day after I had the oral surgery, and I was on medication, and I was feeling sick to my stomach and dizzy because of the medication, and I had pain in my mouth, and I was trying to talk. And, you know, I, I actually did it four times and, and – crashed it because I just couldn't get it together and I went and took a three-hour nap and came back and tried it again the fourth time I got through it so it sounds pretty bad but at least I think you get the idea it must have been okay because she's got the, the dolphin in there okay so anyway this is uh what she created and from a technical standpoint it looks good I like the way she worked on her logo here I'm not exactly sure about her her logo it looks like it's okay Although I, I, it could possibly be that she has uh, incorrectly put this, um, uh, this stroke on this. And, and if she did, you guys saw me demonstrate it a little earlier. So now you all know how to do that correctly, right? You guys can all put a stroke on, on text correctly now, can't you? Right. Okay, remember that for your future classes because you can really surprise an instructor by doing that correctly and making nice strokes mm -hmm. on text. So let's go to the inside spread here. Okay, so here's the inside pages. Um, you know, technically, again, it's perfect. She's got all the stuff here that she needs. Visually, this isn't too bad. I mean, uh, she's got probably a lot of space here. That's kind of dead space. Uh, I, I, I question whether, you know, that space is good, and maybe she could have played around. I, and, and when you're in a situation like this, I might have played around differently with the fonts and I might have actually arranged these elements slightly dif more differently to get mm -hmm. that space gone. So mm -hmm. that space is something she might want to get rid of. She might want to play around with the size of these fonts and the arrangement of the elements here. Uh, the text over here looks okay. Basically it's not as wide. It's a little bit narrower and this looks pretty good. One of the things that I see she could do here as well is she could adjust the bullets over towards the text a little bit. But notice how she's used the capital, or not the capital, but the bold on the Australia and all these things here. Mm -hmm. All right. So it actually makes it look a little bit nicer, but her spacing is off and she should adjust the spacing between the bullet and the text. So the real issues with this, in my opinion, on the inside spread is this big hole here, which just seems like a glaring gap. And it needs to be addressed. So we need to somehow or other mess around with the elements that we have here. And we got the picture here, picture here, 
and this tier, and of course the live onboards and uh, dive resorts, blah, blah, blah. So all these elements need to be dealt with a little bit. And, uh, you know, again, I, I, I wonder that the destinations, uh, and again, it looks like she did not put space after. It looks like she kind of did a return, return type of deal. Uh, whether that should be moved down somewhat, this whole thing. Because, again, you got a big space here. I think from a, from a technical standpoint, visually, I think I would rather see more space up here and less space down here. And I would like to see these, these lines kind of align up a little bit more. So if this came down somewhat, you could eat that space up a little bit. You'd have your negative space up here, which, in my opinion, is not as offensive. So that's what I would recommend, moving that down a little bit and then, you know, playing around with the arrangement of the elements that are on the first panel to your left there to see whether you could get rid of that hole. And, I mean, you can lay this out. If you're a layout artist, you could find 50 different ways to lay this out. You really can. And you can modify these elements, um, different sizes, different arrangements, and uh, I, I'm sure she could come up with a, a reasonable way of, of arranging that. All right? Okay. Any comments? We're good? We're good. All right. Let's go file close. And what do we got left here? We got, uh, we got the – this is Kat, Catherine Day. Okay. So oh, Kat, we looked at this one, didn't we? Yeah. Yes. We okay. Sorry. File close. Get that out of here. All right, let's go to this one here. And this one is, we looked at this one. What's going on? <laughs> what, do I got duplicates? <laughs> I do. I guess I got duplicates. Let's go to Carla. Did I do Carla? You didn't do chat yet. No, I'll get to it yet. I'm going to okay. do it next. Okay, so here we go. We got a new one that we haven't seen before. And this one, again, we have a, sing a similar problem here. Uh, and I know what the problem is now. I, I can see a little, a little indication of what's going on. Uh, everybody see that little dot there? Uh -huh. yes. Okay, let me explain to you why you are not seeing the crop marks or the fold marks. I'm sorry. I keep calling them crop marks. They're fold marks. When, when, uh, Carla, when Carla exported this, she did not include the slug area. Oh. And because she didn't include the slug area, the, the marks that were there don't show up. Oh. If she had included the slug area, those marks would show. And how do I know that? My little indicator is that little black spot right there. That is the tail end of one of my marks. It's right there too. See it? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. You guys see what I'm talking about? Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. So it's there. Also, I noticed that she actually missed one of the, the bullets. She's got one of the bullets in black here. I just thought I'd point that out. <laughs> she also, it looks like she also did the same thing that uh, I think Catherine, was it you that yes, did? That she A. Clipped off the A a little bit. She got yes. her box a little bit uh, clipping off that. Yep. I don't understand why she's got this white and blue box around there, but she should lose that. Um, I just think the Aqua Logo excursions need to look something like that, only that size. And that's more like the size I would like to see it, by the way. So that's actually mm -hmm. pretty good. I also noticed that she's clipped the paw or the, the, the um, paddle of the um, – you see where she's clipped the paddle of the uh, turtle a little bit? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. So she's got to be careful with her boxes. You all got to be careful with your boxes. Um, and her column widths aren't too bad. But, again – you know, she did not indicate a slug area. And the slug area is an area that you put there for things that you want to go to the printer. When I created my template, I created those custom uh, marks, which are the um, fold marks. And why, go ahead. Why are there lines going down through the A in the aqua? Um, that's because there was some weird thing that happened with the logo that she didn't take care of. Uh, okay. the, this logo, I didn't create the logo. It was something that was supplied to me. And uh -huh. It had this weirdness in the A. I don't exactly know what caused it because I didn't create it. Uh -huh. But what you'd have to do is you'd have to go in and you had to go into Pathfinder and you'd have to unite it and it made it go. Right. And she yeah. didn't do that. And that's okay. why it's showing up like that. Uh -huh. 
But I mean, I don't, I know about that and I wouldn't, okay. I would knock any of you on it because I know that's there and I know it's not any of your fault and it would okay. be something that's easily missed. Right. So let's go to our inside spread. So our inside okay. spread is very similar to what I have. I just think that, you know, she needs to show a little more care with it. Um, I think basically her picture should probably be not quite as wide as it is. I don't think you need it. I think you could come in on, on it quite a bit. And one of the real problems I have with it is you got a lot of nice space down at the bottom here. Why is it so close to the text? You That's see what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> There's no reason for it to be that close to the text. You got a great deal of space down here. You can move it down to where it's a nicer uh, arrangement. I, I do like this though. She kind of got this thing okay here. She's got the, the three columns more or less lining up. They're not exactly right. She's pretty close though, but they're not exactly right. This one's a little low and that one might be a little high, but she's got the right idea. And if she just used her guides, you guys remember that yeah. you have rulers and the rulers will drag guides out. You can drag guides out and place guides mm -hmm. and you can align your text visually using the guides. Mm -hmm. And again, we don't have our fold marks in here. Okay. Okay. So that is my criticism of that. Any uh, comments? Mm -mm. No, no. I uh, see she moved over the bullets. That's good. I do believe that the Australia and, of course, the Fiji and so on and so forth would be better off being in a bold font, mm -hmm. something like that. She did indicate A and B on this, which is a very good thing that she spotted that. And, of course, down here are the call outs. A is a clownfish, and that is a clownfish. And there, this man is swimming with the uh, with the ray. And there's the ray, and there's the man swimming at the ray. Mm -hmm. That looks like fun to me. I don't know. Yeah. So, okay, so that's that. File loads. All right. Now, who do we have left here? We have my scuba blue fold folder, which we're going to work on in a minute. Carla, did we look at this one? We did, didn't we? Uh, I think you got set. We already looked at it? That was the one we just looked at. Okay. So we have Chet's here. Let me go in and let's see what Chet's got to offer. Okay, so here's Chet's. So Chet's Aqua Excursion Kayak Tours Sales and Service. Um, first and foremost, from a technical standpoint, he notice he, he has the folds indicated. So what does that tell you guys? If he has the folds indicated, that tells you that he did include the slug area, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. You guys remember what the slug area is? Yeah. The yes. Yeah, the yeah. printer marks, putting printer marks in. So when he has these marks showing he did correctly indicate the, cro the slug area, he's mm -hmm. got his crop marks, he's got his bleed marks, he's got his registration, he's got a color bar, and he has a grayscale bar. Mm -hmm. So he's got all that stuff here. His logo looks real good. I, I believe he made the same mistake that it was Catherine that made. Was it you that made the mistake, Catherine? Um, who did it? Oh, on the white, one yeah. Was, I Which did. Which one who you made it? It was on Catherine. The on the excursions, the way that you did yes, the text? I did. What, Catherine? Yes. Okay, so I was right. Yes. I didn't want you to think I was picking on you. I just thought... No, you were. you're not. Okay, so here's the deal. Here's the deal. You can see it really over here. Now, this is in white, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Blue, look at what happens to the text over here. You can't see the white. Ah. So, you see, if he had done this correctly, like I showed you, you would have had a very nice white outline that would not have interfered with the face of that font and would have looked much better. Oh. It actually looks pretty good, but it would have much looked much better. The mm -hmm. kayak tours and sales service could be a little bit bigger because he's got plenty of room here. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be much bigger, but it could be bigger. The logo could be a little bit bigger because it is, in fact, a little tiny bit uh, too close to the size of what's on the back. Although, I think the color looks good. And I like the fact that he kind of matched his colors up to the colors that he was using mm -hmm. on his kayak. I think that was a very smart move. And I like the fact that when we get onto the back here, He's got this soft focus edge of the picture against the water. I like that very much. That's sort of like almost saying the hell with the, with, the, uh, with the border. I'm going to go the entire other way. And you know what? It works. The reason yes. it works is because it puts emphasis on the picture. And that's the whole point of it is you want to put emphasis. He did it over here too. He's doing something to create emphasis around the picture. 
And I also like the fact that he was very careful to um, put text wrap around this picture. Mm -hmm. And he's got a nice amount of space here around this text wrap. This yeah. is a little bit narrow, but it isn't so bad that it doesn't work. It works fairly nicely. Um, I, would, I, would have had, I would have added a little more space here between the one hour and the eight hour. I would have added a little more space between that area right there. I'm okay. sorry, did somebody have a question or a comment? I was going to ask how you do the, the text wrap, but dad knows how, so he's going to show oh, me. Oh, type text, go to the type menu, go to text wrap, and a panel will come up, and you can indicate text wrap for the object. And you generally have a picture or a box over top of text, and you indicate the text wrap for the box, and it wraps the text, and then you can offset sides. Okay. And let's see what the inside looks like. So here's the inside, and again, not bad. Uh, a tour package for every taste. He's got that, you know, violating the fold, but that's all right. I have no problem with that. Uh, I think his columns look okay. A little Ooh. close over here. I would have, I actually, if you really want to know the truth, I think I'd like to see the columns a little bit narrower. I think he could find a way to make them a little narrower. They're not that bad though. There's an awful lot of copy over here. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know where he's got all this copy, but it would be nice if the copy was a little less. It's an, it is quite a bit of copy, mm -hmm. you know? That's that I think is my biggest problem with it is kind of copy heavy in here. That's probably the big deal, the biggest problem with this. Unfortunately, you do run into that uh, problem every once in a while. You'll have a copywriter give you text that you're working with. Oh, and another thing too is I noticed that his use of spacing around the photos is inconsistent. If you go back to this one, you see where he's got a really nice clean gap there. Uh -huh. Go to this one. Uh, I'm sorry. Go to this one. Too close. It should be moved over slightly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Too close. So, okay. little subtle things. Mm -hmm. But I, I think he did a nice job. He got nice photos. I like the fact that he's got this nice photo coming up to here, and then he's created this sky for it. I'm pretty sure he created that sky. Uh, it works very nicely. Nice job overall. Mm -hmm. And I like his font. The fonts that he chose to use are nice fonts. Visually, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, you know, I think another little thing is like, for instance, here, uh, I'm I'm one that likes very tight letting. You know what letting is? Line spacing? Yes. Have you ever heard the term letting? Yes. Uh, okay. So when you're working with letting, you're working with line spacing. Uh, my opinion of this is that, you know, his line spacing probably could have been a little bit tighter on this and maybe even this, and then he could have adjusted. I, again, you'd have to look at this to see how it would work. But since he's got these lines in here, they almost look too regular. They need to be a little bit, I'd say, tighter here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. I think this is probably a nice job, generally. Any comments by you guys? No, I want to go there. This is, <laughs> all right. Yeah, right. The tea on the tour. All right, so let's see. Do we got everything? Yeah, we go back from chat. I think we pretty much got everybody. There's one more here. Who's this? Okay, this is um, Tori, and I guess Tori's not here tonight. Uh, I'm not going to open this, but I just wanted to point out to you. I, did I do this already? I showed you the document fonts and the links? Yes. Okay, so I won't bother doing that again. This is Chet, his first submission. And I use this to explain to you that if you send this thing to me now, we went into here and we looked at Chet's um, PDF file, you'll, you'll see that I have document fonts and uh, assessment and links. For some reason, I had trouble downloading his, but when I looked at them, they were there, and I checked them, and they were properly there. So I gave him credit for that. I just could not download them properly. I don't know why. I'm not exactly sure. Okay. But you can see that he did package this, and it just didn't work out. Um, I would have told him probably to go back in and repackage it and send it to me again, uh, but I didn't have time to do that. All right. All right. So that's that's my critique. Uh, I hope you all are satisfied with it. Is there any comments or any thoughts that you have before we end that part of this? This no. presentation? Um. When we go into special effects, we just go in through a window. No. No. Um. Let me go to InDesign. Hold on. Let me go to okay. InDesign. 
and go to the um, uh, let's go to let's see where we at here object effects and there's your effects object oh, okay, ob okay. object there effects. Is. all right okay, okay. And, and the only thing I can tell you is open up InDesign create yourself a little box all right and just go in and play around with these effects and see how they stack up to Illustrator and Photoshop because they pretty much do Right. I'm sure that most of the stuff that's in there is the things that you saw some people tonight use. You can use these effects on text boxes, picture boxes, color boxes, and text. Uh huh. Okay. All right. All right. And now, when you say space after and space before, that's just hitting the space well, bar. Look here. Look. Look right here. You see what okay. this is? That's space that's before. That's space that's after. So uh, if, you set, if you set two paragraphs of text with text with one return, and you want to add some extra space, you can come in here and you can add extra space. See, uh -huh. I'm adding extra space. I I just added eight points of of extra space. Uh -huh. Okay, and I'm I'm removing it now. So that's what it is. That's space before, space after, and this if you want to do initial caps, and you can even do a number of caps, uh -huh. and you can indent. Left indent. Okay, and I know. You can do a first line indent, and you can right indent, and you can even do a last line right indent. Right. I just okay. never. It never even dawned on me to do the space after and space before. Yeah. Don't do. Don't do returns. Just basically okay. do one return. Get your copy in there, and what you do is you select all of your paragraphs at one time, and mm -hmm. you set your uh, space before or space after. Generally use one or the other. I generally use space after. So that means essentially that there's no space before any of the paragraphs, but after every paragraph, there'll be a certain small amount of space added to the leading. Okay? Okay. All right. All right. So now we're on to our next thing, which is this. So I got, I'm going to demonstrate now how to work with, because uh, I got really... Uh, an hour to do three things. I got to show you how to work with um, Dropbox, and I want to make sure that you completely understand how to package and produce a PDF so that you can submit your work. And then I'll give you guys whatever time is left over to talk to me about anything you want to talk about. All right? Okay. All right. So here's the thing I created these images. I got a bunch of images in here. These are images that are going to go to one of my customers. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to back out of here. I am going to, I'm on a PC, you have your way of doing it, I have my way of doing it, I am going to right click that folder, and I'm going to send it to a compressed zip folder. Okay. And it's compressing that file, and boom, there's my compressed zip folder. Okay. okay. All of you have done this, right? Yeah, like that. Like that. Well, no, but you've done it in another way. On your, you got a piece. I mean, you got a Mac. I got a PC, so it's a little bit different. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me ask you something, Bill. What? Um, have you have you worked on a Mac though when you're designing? Yeah. Is there a preference? For what? For which one you'd rather work on? Um. Yeah, I, I'd much rather have a Mac. But okay. of course, they, the the PC that I have have, which is a pretty good PC, cost me like fifteen hundred bucks, uh -huh. and the Mac would have cost me oh, almost three. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I I have a sweet tooth, and I'd rather buy candy than spend all that money on a on a Mac. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Okay. So I mean, I'm being a cheapskate, but uh, the PC works just as good as the Mac. The only thing is, I got to watch out that I don't get viruses on the PC. But you know. I take out a, I take out a, a care a care thing on it so that if I run into a problem I call Dell up and Dell uh, you know troubleshoots my computer and fixes it for me so okay it's cheaper that's really why that's all yeah. you know all right so now I have my zip folder and that zip folder is nothing really but that folder compressed okay, okay. so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna open up my um, Firefox. And this is Dropbox. How have any, one of you? I don't know. I think was you, Catherine, that said you had Dropbox. Yeah, I've got Dropbox. Okay, because your husband is a uh, artist and he works with it. Um, he doesn't. He he hates computers. But oh. one of the guys down at the gallery, um, another partner that um 
is down there. He he also works on Max, and in fact, he runs a, a art by the yard printing um, thing. So cool. Uh, and he's a, he's a partner of your husband's. Well, they're all there's like the the owner of the gallery, and then him, and then my husband has his studio there. So That's great. That's great. Yeah. Well, then you know you you got somebody that you can talk to from time to time about all this. That's very yeah. good. And it makes it nice. I would take advantage of that and talk to him. Have do. any of you, have Jennifer or Carla, have any of you ever played around with Dropbox? No, I have not. Okay, so you basically just go to www.dropbox.com, and uh, I w I'm going to start off by clicking on my little drop. Oh, by the way, just so that you know, I'm already logged in here. See that? Mm -hmm. Just like anything else, you have to log in. So this is free. I have 2.5 gigabytes of Dropbox space, okay, which is not a lot. However, it's free. I don't have to pay for it. Right. So what I generally do is I generally throw things away once they become outdated, and then I move new stuff up onto it as it becomes necessary to do so. And okay. this works just fine for me. So I'm going to come here and click on Dropbox. I'm going to bring myself over to Dropbox Home. And here is my Dropbox area, okay? okay? And these are some of the things that are in here right now. Some of this stuff will, by the end of the week, be thrown away because it's kind of like, at this point, dead space. I'm just wasting. All right, so, again, you're going to come in. You'll set yourself up with a Dropbox account, and you'll have something that looks very much like this with your name up here, mm -hmm. all right? So I can come in here, and I can upload a file. I can create a new folder. I can share a folder. What you're going to see me do tonight is you're going to see me upload a folder, and you're going to see me share a folder. I can also throw something away. So if I were to come in here and, like, say, oh, I don't know, let's see, uh, zip, images zip. Let's click on that, and let's throw that away. Gone. Okay? Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to upload a new folder. And... Choose files. This is very much like just browsing, like in any other browser. I'm going to choose the files, and it's going to bring me to my desktop, and I'm looking for critique because I have it in with the critique. So let me find my critique here. Uh, where is it? It is uh, – ah, hello. Um, anybody see it? Oh, here we go. Click on that. And Munch right there, 10, 11, 10. 14 and I'm going to open and here go see it's actually uploading this to Dropbox it's that simple it's just basically setting up an account and going in and and uh, clicking the right little icon and it's got 30 in about 30 seconds it's going to upload the thing and then I'll show you how I send it to the uh, the customer Essentially, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send him an email letting him know that it's been up uploaded and he can go in and he can follow that email back. And is anyone else losing audio? What? Yeah. Are you guys losing audio? And maybe because this Dropbox is loading. Well, you were, because, it's probably because your Dropbox is loading. That could be it. Can you hear me? Okay, hold on. There. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Done. Done? Now done. you can hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you know what? It was probably we we're being interfered with by the dropper. So basically you get the idea that essentially you start up an account for yourself with Dropbox. There's other ones too. You don't have to go to Dropbox. I just use Dropbox. There's several I got, but I use Dropbox most commonly. And mm -hmm. let's see what I got here. This is called Munch 11, 10, 14. So let's see, where is that now? That is right there. See it? Munch 11, 10, 14 zip. Now, notice that it's got the blue highlighting on it, right? Uh -huh. Okay. Yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and I'm going to, first of all, let me move this down a little bit so I can get his name. There we go. I'm going to click on share a folder because that's essentially what I'm going to do. I'm going to now send uh, an email to my customer letting him know that his folder's there and he can go and get it. Click on that. What would you like to do? I'd like to share an existing folder. Right? Can you hear me now? 
Yes. Okay. I'm going to share an existing folder. I'm going to hit next. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to find, uh, let's see here. Let's go back. Wait a minute. Maybe I'd like to create a new folder to share. New folder's name. Whoa, what's going on here? Hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. Let's go here and let's try. What am I doing wrong here? That's it. Oh, here we go. I'm sorry. I just double click it. I don't even have to do that. I just double click it. Okay, so when I double click, I'll do it again. When I double click this, okay, I get this window and I can download it, which I obviously don't want to do because I just put it up there, right? I got it already. I want to share this. So I click on share. And okay, so uh, it's going to show the link to where it is. There's the link. And all I'm going to do is come in here to see where it says send this link to. And I'm going to type in the name. Edward Goldberg at gmail.com. See, I, I already sent to him. So essentially, I would be sending to an email. So if you were going to be sending something to me, you would type in william.sweeney at independence.edu, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. So that's all there is to it. And I click on that. And now there's my address. And if the message, I'm just going to put in here, um, please look these over and let me know if this is what you meant please let me look these over and let me know if this is what you meant hit send done sent to edward goldberg so now all he has to do is wait for that email to come in his in his email account and he will click the link that's attached to the email it will take him right to here and he will click on that like I did and download it he'll do that and he can then download so does he see everything else that's on your Dropbox when he clicks on that link or just the munch uh, he might see he I, I, I really don't remember I think he'll see it but I don't think it's available to him because they cause he'll get is what you sent him yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm not exactly sure how they do it at this point. I don't really remember. I've done it a couple of times. I've downloaded things a couple of times. Right. Um, I think I think what happens is it sends that link. It sends that to his draw. I'm just not sure I remember exactly how. how I know it. when files have been sent to me with pictures and stuff or whatever, if I need to crop something or yeah. this or that, um, that's what I get is the file. I don't see anything. So I think then what, the, what it does is the link will automatically start the download process for the file. Right. That's probably what, right. That's probably what happens. It just automatically, when you click that link, it automatically asks you if you want to open or download the file, you download it, and then you can open it. Right. That's and probably. isn't it, um, doesn't Dropbox also offer more, more space when you, when you bring in more people? Uh, it might. I don't know because I've never really taken advantage of that. It might. Um, I know that you can also pay some money, but again, uh, I don't use it that much for that many big files, and I generally clean mine up every few weeks. I, I throw a lot of stuff out. Right. Just all it is is a way to get some information to somebody else uh, that is over the may amount of megs that I the amount of gigs that I have available on an email. I, I think I can only go 25 megs on an email. Uh -huh. Here I go two point some odd gigs. So, you know, it has to be pretty, pretty, pretty darn big for me to choke on that one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Was that easy? Yeah. That was easy. Not hard, right? So this is a nice little backup. If you run into a situation where for some reason or other, you can't get something over to one of your instructors, what you want to do is you basically want to, uh, you know, tell them that you sent it to them by Dropbox. And I'm sure that they wouldn't have any problem with that. I know I wouldn't have a problem with that if that, if that occurred, because I want to get you to get the art in. And if you're, for whatever reason, can't get it to me through the normal course, that will be acceptable to me. And sure, they would feel the same way. Yeah, Google Drive is also something that's really nice, and I think you have way, way more space than even that. That's okay. something where we can we can save a lot of our work. Yeah, 
So they, if something was to happen, I mean, we could pull it up anywhere. Great. And um, I will highly advise everybody to get Google Drive. Good. And put in the files that they want to keep of their artwork or whatever and keep it in Google Drive. Great. Well, and that's Tara, great. Tara will say the same thing. Great. Okay. Well, there you go. That's definitely uh, that's definitely a good possibility. So uh, the bottom line, though, is that you know you just need to be aware that it is very simple to overcome a problem like not being able to upload the file properly. And again, these are all techniques that that relate to um, production. I mean, when you when you're actually going to send something to a printer, they generally have some sort of a mechanism like this that they use for you to send stuff to them, you know, and you just need to know this stuff. It's, it's, it's kind of important stuff. So, you know, I just want you to realize that's what this course is, is, is really about preparing the artwork files properly and getting them sent off to the printer properly and being able to deal with a printer. And, uh, I think Jennifer was, was it you said that said your father was a printer? Yes. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, you guys, as you're working through these projects, it is really a good idea to talk to printers. I mean, printers are people who are going to be working on your projects. Their ultimate goal is to get the job done correctly and beautifully and get paid. That's what it's really all about. And there's nothing wrong with that. So they are more than willing and able to help you and are Make motivated to help too. you. Huh? That it makes their job easier too. It makes it easier, and the bottom line is they want the job done, and they want to bill it. They want their money. Yeah. So you know they want headaches, and if if somebody's going to give them headaches, then they they're going to be unhappy about it. But if you openly go to them and try to help them, they're more and more than likely, unless there's something wrong with them mentally, they're going to want to help you because it, it it helps them. You know. One thing that I always hear him complain about is like the crop marks and the bleed. Yeah, that's why I spent so really much big on it. effort on it because you got to have the right marks for the right job. We looked at two very specific type of jobs here. We looked at a process color job, a four color process job, mm -hmm. and we looked at a Pantone job. They are totally different kind of jobs. One of them calls for three individual colors that are going to be, and I'm just going by a three color job. Uh, it could be a two-color job. It could be a one-color job. Each individual color is on its own unique separate little plate. And there's as many as you decide to use, one, two, three, even four. Yet generally, when you start getting beyond four, they start thinking seriously about four-color process. But at any rate, then you have your four-color process job. And what's required for each are slightly different. And it's the same thing with the with the color. I mean, you one of the things you definitely do not want to do is put spot colors in with process colors because then the printer has to think to themselves, am I supposed to be using a spot color which would then create a separate plate? And if it's a separate plate, it's going to cost more money. And that means he's going to have to ask somebody, you or whoever, is that what your intention is? Mm -hmm. And if that's not your intention, he's going to have to wait while you submit another file and you go in and make the correction. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I wanted to cover this stuff to make sure you were aware of this stuff so you wouldn't make these mistakes in the first place. Mm -hmm. You remember me talking about that? Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, this is where this course really lives in this little realm. It isn't so much about design. We're not here to think about, you know, negative space and uh, all that. We're here talking about production things as I guess Jennifer's father uh, mentioned to her crop marks, fold marks, you know, registration marks. These are the kind of things that we are learning about here today. And, you know, somebody has got to teach you this stuff and that's what I'm here for. Right. And you taught us about this in design 105 as well. Uh huh. And, and the reason I did that was because again, I, it's, it's one of the most important things when you, and when you're working with InDesign, setting up a document on, the beginning of the document and the end of the document is incredibly important. What oh, yeah. you don't want to do is set up a document incorrectly because then you have to go in and try to adjust it. And it's a big pain in the neck to adjust the document when you're right. building it. If you create it the right size, the right way from the very beginning, you'll have a real smooth 
transition through the document, and then when you get done with it, you have to make sure that you export it correctly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Good to know. We got two things. We got a half hour to do two things, and I've done this both before. But again, uh, I I will tell you this. I've seen through week two and week three. I've seen at least three or four students making the same mistakes over and over again, either not sending me the productions properly or, or not sending the production at all. Again, Chet at one point, and I'm not knocking the guy, but Chet at one point sent me that right there, which is totally incorrect. Then he got, then he got himself together and sent me that, which is technically more correct. Mm -hmm. So these things are happening, and that's why I want to just go over this one more time. So I got InDesign. I'm going to open up my InDesign document. Now, this has already been done. This has already been a packaged file. I'm going to go through the process again, and I'm going to create the package all the way over uh, once again. Now, look. Uh, this document contains links or sources that have been modified. You can update the links now or update them later using the links panel. Well, you know what? Let's do this. Let's, let's just update them later. So I'm going to not update the links so I can show you the links panel. Oh, you know what? That's not mine. I'm sorry. Hold on. Let's go close. This is not the right one. I, I grabbed the wrong one. I'm looking for, I'm looking for that one. This is mine. Sorry. He open it. Okay. And again, this has already been done once before, but I'm using this as an example. Okay, so here's my here is my my uh my trifold brochure. Mm -hmm. And for all intents and purposes, let's just say that my brochure is technically complete and I'm ready to go. Uh you can see that I got my crops out here, I got my folds out here. Um, I don't have any other marks, but but that's going to all be produced by the printer and by the PDF process, okay? So this is all correct. Now, the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into the um, edit, and you're going to want to go spelling, and you're going to go to check spelling. And you're going to come in here, and you're going to go through your document very quickly, and you're just going to check the spelling. So Samu happens to be the name of a diver. So I'm not going to change that. I'm just going to skip it. Ridge Mills, I deliberately named that company. It's a fictitious company. I'm going to pretend that's correct. I'm going to skip that. And Live Aboards, I have no idea where that came from, but that's something that the copywriter dream whipped up for me. And I'm going to leave it alone because the copywriter has already you know, indicated to me that it's correct. So I skipped that. I got exotic. I made a typo here. It's exotic. The world is full of exotic travel destinations. I made that mistake so I could show you me fixing this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down. I'm going to choose exotic and I'm going to change all. There's only one of them, but I'll change all. And then destinations, I also made a mistake deliberately. I'm going to change all again. And then I got... Uh, uh, honeymoon or destination wedding. I spelt that wrong. And let's see if I can find wedding. W E. Let's see. W E. Uh, it doesn't come up. Isn't it W E D D I N G? Yes. I don't know why that didn't come up, but it didn't come up. So I fixed that one. At least it caught it. Let's hit start. And we're back to scuba blue. That's a, that's the name of a, of a company. I'm going to, uh, leave that alone. I did spot one thing down here though, and that is you see how scuba blue mm -hmm. is broken like that? No hyphenation. You need to um, yeah. you, go you, on. You never, you never hyphenate the name of a business. Right. So I, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to go in and I'm going to have to modify that. And what I would do with that is I would change the I would go into the two lines and I would change the um the, the spacing, okay, I would come in here and I would come in and set the spacing, the letter spacing. Mm -hmm. I would adjust that letter spacing and I'd make that scuba blue up on one line. But let me finish this first. So Bora is okay, I'm going to skip that. Bora is okay, Moria is okay, skip that. And it's done. Yeah, A is okay. And my email, that's, that's a fictitious thing too. Email, that's fine. And Bora, that's it. 
skip and done. Come on, finish. And that's it, done. Okay, so we're done. Now let's see if I can fix this real quickly. I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna grab that line just like that. And I'm gonna see if I can come in here. You need to get a honeymoon too. Honeymoon was wrong? It's hyphenated. Oops, let's go, I gotta go more now. Let's go 10. There you go, see what I did? All I did was I set this, okay, this is the tracking. I set the tracking to a negative 10 and check it out. It brought scuba blue up onto that one line and the letter spacing is a little tiny bit tighter for that, but I don't think it's that bad. I don't think anybody could really see that, but it was able, I was able to get that scuba blue up on the one line. You see what I did? Mm -hmm. Okay. So these are the things when, when you talk about, when we talk about production, and I know that this isn't a perfect piece. I, I mean, I know that. It, it's not perfect. It, it's, it's, it's a decent piece, and that's really what it comes down to. The bottom line is you want to make sure that you got everything done. I, I see that there are some additional hyphens in here, but honeymoon is fine. You can go into the paragraph, into your paragraph styles, and I believe there's a place where you uncheck that hyphenated or whatever. Yes, yes. You can, but this is also this is also justified text. I oh, got okay. justified text, and I um, and I don't mind a little hyphen now and then to get nice justification on this. And oh. I like the neatness of this. I don't normally use justified text, but uh -huh. in this particular case, I did. You know what I'm talking about? Justified text. Yes. Yeah. This is justified. Okay. Uh, let's see if I can show you. Yeah. Here. See. Justified. Uh -huh. Last line aligned left. I this is not, but that is. See it? Uh -huh. Okay. So that's it. The bottom line is that's it. So now I've checked my I've checked my um I've checked my text. There are no spelling errors that I'm aware of at this point. I did very nicely spot that scuba blue and I was able to fix that very quickly. Uh, these are the kind of things that you're going to want to do. So now I'm going to do two things. This is the project's now ready to be sent off to the printer. So I'm going to do two things. I'm going to go in and I'm going to package it first. And packaging it basically, as I think I indicated back here, let me go back to this. This is, is uh, let's go back to my critique. Okay, this is what Chet sent me originally. And if I try to open this up, the pictures that accompany this are not there. And they will open up only for show, but I can't, I wouldn't be able to print from them because they're low resolution um, placeholder images. And the fonts, if I don't have the fonts, the fonts won't display properly. Mm -hmm. Chet then came in and he packaged this and he's got my document in here and he's got his link and he's got his fonts. And even though these aren't working properly, I know he did it. And I saw it in his download area, and I checked it in there, and they were correct. So I just have to figure out why I can't download it. But he did it correct, and that's the important thing. So mm -hmm. I'm about to do it one more time for you, finally, so that you are uh, completely clear with what it is that we are trying to accomplish. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down, I'm going to go to package. And I notice right away when this comes up, I got my panel over here, which gives me my individual areas of interest, my fonts. Mm -hmm. And there are all my fonts. And see, the statuses are okay on all the fonts. Okay. Mm -hmm. The links and images here are my – now, look. I get the same thing. If I go to summary, I get the same thing. See that little um, yellow triangle with the exclamation point? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. essentially a warning. And what that warning is telling me – you got three RGB colors. There you go. You got it. You remember from the last time we did this, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the bottom line is I would uh, – and, and, and I want you to remember when I said this to you before, I did this deliberately so that this would happen so that you could get a better understanding of what we're looking for in here. Mm -hmm. Now, this is another very important thing, colors and inks. Notice that all of them are processed color inks. Notice that there are no spot color inks. So that means that the logo that I'm using, if you remember, we, I showed you how to make a process logo and a Pantone logo, right? Remember? Right. Okay. And you, as a graphic designer, have to know how to make both a process and a Pantone logo, and you have to know when to correctly use both. If I had used a, a 
a Pantone color logo, I would see the two spot colors, I would see two there because that, that logo would have been done in spot color. And then the printer would have also seen that and would have said to himself, hey, wait a minute, this job needs to be printed as five, six color. So it's going to cost process more. and two spots. Right. And that's going to cost more money. Right. And then he'd have to call me and he'd have to say, hey, you've got a problem here or is this what you want? And I'd have to say, no, no, that's a problem. Let me get you the right file. And now we'd, be, we'd have to go through the process again. It's the same thing with this. I'm sure that if the printer saw three RGB color images, he would be calling me up saying, you got three RGB images here. Now, he could go in to Photoshop and he could convert them. But then you know what? He's going to want to charge you for that. Of course. And that's not the way it's supposed to work. I mean, you're supposed to do your job properly. That's what this course is all about. Okay. So I have a choice here. I could stop right where I am and I could literally just go back into Photoshop and I could change all three of these into RGB or I could continue with my package and make a mental note that three of my images are in the wrong color mode. And after I package the file, I could go back into Photoshop and I could change them there. One way or the other, it's critical that you understand that these have to be converted to CMYK. You all know that, right? Yes. Okay. Now, did I do this last time? Did I show you how I went in and opened or do you need me to show you how to do that? How do you open it after it was packaged? Yeah. No, you didn't show us that. Would you like to see me do one that way? Because I can do it very easy. Okay. Yes. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Right now, I'm going to make a mental note that I got three using RGB color space. I'm going to hit package, and publication must be saved. So, okay, save it. It's now packaging this. I get my instructions. Do you, you remember me talking about these instructions last time? Okay, so you're going to name the file. You're going to put contact information. Obviously, that's you. If you want, you can put the company you could put the address, although these are not quite as important as the contact information. Mm -hmm. Put your phone number in. That's a smart thing. Put your email in. If you think a fax is important, put it in. Whatever part of this you want to fill out, you fill out. And here, any instructions that you think you might want to tell the, the, the printer. It, it could be nothing. It could be something. Totally up to you. You just have to decide whether there's something specific that you want to make sure you say to him. This is going to be just a little word file that he's going to be able to. Open. So after you put all the information in, you're just going to hit continue. And what's going to happen is you're going to get another little window that pops up. Oh, first of all, you're going to get, uh, I'm going to go to my desktop. This is the package publication dialog box. Mm -hmm. What this is going to do is it's going to create a folder. The folder is going to be called scuba blue underscore final folder. That's what it's going to call. You want to change the name, you can change the name. But I'll leave this alone. This is okay for me right now. Well, let me show you exactly what this is going to do. It's going to come in and it's going to copy the fonts. It's going to copy linked graphics. And it's going to update graphic links in package. Now, what update links in graphic pack or update graphic links in package means is, simply put, it's going to recreate the document in the folder. And it's going to link to the linked graphics that are in the folder. Mm -hmm. Okay? So it's going to copy the graphics into the folder, and it's going to create a new document that links to those graphics. So mm -hmm. now you have something which is a complete package. Does that make sense? Yes. Great. So I'm going to now hit package. I get this warning, and this is basically just a software warning. It's telling you that, you know, you are allowed to use the uh, fonts, um, but you have to be careful that they only get used for this particular job. Um, I only reason I don't say don't show this again because I don't need to see this is I, I like to leave it out so that I can at least mention it to you. It's just a restriction of the fonts. That's really all it is. Okay? You understand? Yes. Okay. Yes. No questions about it? Yeah. Good. Okay. There it is. It's, it's building my package. Saving the document. And it's done. So now if I drop this down and I go to my desktop, Google Blue 
final folder. I double click and there are my document fonts. These are all the fonts that are being used in my document. Your printer probably has all these fonts because one thing uh, the printer will have is a ton of fonts because he probably buys almost all the fonts that are out there just to save himself any aggravation. We'll go back. Here's your image links. There are the images in here, mm -hmm. the images that we're about to work with. And I'm going to open one of these up in Photoshop and show you how to convert it from RGB to CMYK. Oh, and by the way, um, it's not really telling me. It doesn't tell me the size of this. Let me see if I can properties. Here we go. Okay, so let's see what we got here. JPEG. It uh, uh, doesn't show me. Yeah, it's not showing me. Okay, details. Uh, let's see if it tells me anywhere here. Calibrated Canon. No, it's not going to show me it at all. I'll be darned. And it give, tells you RGB well, and it gave you a size uh, dimension 1704 by 2272. Where? Is it showing it there? The image ID. Yeah, where do you see the where do you see uh CM RGB? Oh, uh, was it up some? Yeah, it was either up or down. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. There you go. Okay, so we know that that was one that's RGB. Diver one. So here's what I'm gonna do. You're right, thank you. All right. I'm gonna open Photoshop up. Let me open Photoshop up real quick. And then I'm going to just drag diver one into Photoshop. And I'll show you how to convert it. And what you would do literally is you'd go through all these images and you'd find the ones that are RGB because there are, I think it said three, right? Three that were RGB? Yes. Yeah. So three of these are going to be RGB and you would just change them. I'm only going to do one because you only need to see one to understand, right? I yeah. had problems changing the, the 300 uh, resolution one. Um, well, first of all, uh, you have to make sure. Let me, I'll talk about that in a second. Let me drag that in. All right, so there it is. It's going in. I think it's going in. Let me see. Try it again. Drag it in. Okay, come on. Yeah, it is. It's going in. Okay. Oh, this is CMYK. That's the wrong one. Yeah, the wrong one. Clownfish. CMYK. <laughs> nope. Wasn't it that? I, I could have sworn. The the man ray. They're all CMYK. Why is this doing this? <laughs> RGB. Okay, so my diver's RGB. Okay. I found one. So here's my diver. He's in RGB. All I have to do, it's really simple. You just go up into the image and you go into mode and it says RGB with the check mark next to it. And you're just going to sit on top of CMYK and let go. And it'll ask you if you want to merge layers. Now, this is something you need to know about. See the background of that picture there? Uh -huh. Okay, do you see how it's got that checkerboard of white and, and gray? Right. Okay, this, is indicating, this is indicating that this is a, uh, a TIFF file that has transparency associated with it. And I do not want to merge the layers because if I merge the layers, it's going to flatten it. And all that transparency is going to turn to white. Mm. So in this particular case, That's where funny. it says merge, I don't want to merge it. I'm going to hit don't merge. And then it's going to say, you are about to convert to CMYK using US web, blah, 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 blah. Uh, if I want to change my web, my web profile, this is probably fine. The US web coded profile. Um, a printer can tell you whether he wants that profile or whether he wants another profile. In our particular case, web coded is fine. Okay. But you can go into edit, convert the profile if you need to change those profile. And again, it's something that your printer can tell you if you need to do. In our case, we don't have to worry about it. And this is just a demonstration anyway. So I'm going to hit OK. And now you see what happened? I still got my background. See my background? Mm -hmm. But look it up here. What does it say? CMYK. There you go. So that's all there is to it. But this is absolutely critical. <coughs> These things are absolutely critical that you do this. Okay? Okay. Cool. All right. So it's now, okay now? You, what? It's, it's okay. It's going to link to your change. Or do you have Can to it what? Something? The change that you just made to CMYK, is that all you need to do? Or does it, does it automatically link your package to that file? No. Here's what's going to happen. 
it's going to pop up a window saying that the, it, the image has been modified. Do you want to relink it? And I hit yes, because I do. I deliberately relinked it. Oh. I mean, I deliberately modified it. So it's going to tell me, the, the program, when I open the, the file up, will tell me that that image has been modified. But I know I did it. I wanted to modify it. I'm, I actually am fixing it. Okay. Okay? Uh -huh. Yeah. So now I'm going to just close that. And, of course, do you want to save the changes? Of course I do want to change the, same, the changes. So I've now made that one correct. And there is probably two more in here. It's probably the turtle in the reef. They're probably the ones in there that are the offenders. But I don't think I need to do any more. You, you get it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the important thing for you to understand is that you just have to remember to do these things. These are kind of technical things that are very important for you. You have to make sure that you have all your marks in. You have to make sure that, you know, the copy is doing what you want it to do like for instance where i had that logo broken you have to notice these things or someone has to notice them and you have to fix them you have to make your production perfect so that it can be sent to the printer so now we've done that we've got our scuba blue folder here now the last thing that i'm going to want to do is show you how to make the pdf this is a little bit different uh the pdf essentially instead of being a document which is a package document uh, a PDF is a self-contained package document. You know what I mean when I say that? A self-contained package document. That means essentially, instead of having a folder that have folders inside of it that have fonts and images, what a PDF does is it embeds all that information into itself. And it just gives you a file that has the fonts that are used in the document embedded into it. And the pictures that are being used embedded into it. And the colors embedded into it. Okay. Okay? So most of, the most of the printers can and do use those kind of documents. So you can use them a lot. And what I generally do is I generally send them both, the package document and the PDF. So now that we've created the package document, and I guess it's safe to assume that you guys are clear on the packaging process. You guys... Are comfortable with that? Mm -hmm. Cool. Let's go in and let's create our our um, uh, our other version. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to export, and I'm going to come down at the bottom of my export here, and you see what it says "Save as Type." Mm -hmm. Got a number of different ways that you could do this, but the bottom line is what you're looking for is Adobe PDF print. Okay. So all this other stuff, don't worry about right now. Pay attention to Adobe PDF print. That's the one you want. Not interactive. I was sitting over that, but you want Adobe PDF print, okay? Okay. Right. Click on that. So it should say scuba blue final PDF, Adobe PDF print. And where do you want to put it? Uh, I want to put it in my final folder. So let's find my final folder, scuba blue final folder. You're going to open it up, and then you're going to hit save. And your Adobe PDF dialog box comes up. And, you know, normally you want something like press quality, but, you know, high quality print will be fine because this is not for real. You've got standards and you've got compatibility. As far as the standards are concerned, you don't really have to concern yourself with that. Your printer can tell you if he's going to require you to use a particular standard. He'll tell you that. Compatibility, you can generally stay with the default, which is five. That means essentially that anywhere from five, six, seven, eight, or nine, this will work for. Okay? Four is pretty far out there. So you'll notice that the default is set to five. I generally leave that alone. Okay? Okay. Now, this is based on high-quality print. These settings create Adobe PDF documents for high-quality printing on document printers and proofers. So that's what this is really all about. As far as all this other stuff is concerned, you are going to be, paint, you're going to be uh, printing out or you're going to be uh, proofing out all of your pages, so you're just going to leave all selected there, okay? Uh, you don't need to op optimize for fast web view because we're not going to be doing that. You can remove that if you want. Uh, the only other thing that you should worry about right now, unless your printer tells you differently, is your marks and bleeds. And notice that mine, since I've done this before, is set up with all the printer's marks. And unless your printer tells you something different, you're going to give them all the marks. And that would mean that you're going to give them crop marks, 
bleed marks, registration marks, color bars, and page information. Then you're going to use the document bleed settings. Now this goes into, I, one of you guys were in my last class? Yeah, I was. Uh, Katrin. Yes. So the reason that I showed you how to create my document is because one of the things that you want to make sure that you do is set up your document bleed settings in your document so that you can go in and you can choose to use the document bleed settings mm -hmm. instead of creating your own. Now, if I deselect this, these become available and I can put in the settings. But because I created them already in my document, all I really have to do is click on that and notice what it says, one, uh, point one two five. Where do you think it's getting that number from? It's from the document. There you go. So you get you get the exact idea what I'm talking about here. Now, also, this is incredibly important because I, I saw a number of students miss this. You also have to include the slug area, and I'll show you why. I've indicated folds on my, in my slug area, and I've indicated a slug area. You see that line right there, that, that, that blue line? Mm -hmm. That indicates my slug area. So if I don't, if I were to click this off, when I actually export this, it's not going to give me my slug area. It's going to make that disappear. So by clicking that, I now know that that is going to be all the way to that line, and I'll get that information. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Okay. So you can see that if you do this the correct way from start to finish, all of this stuff means something. And it all kinds of means the same thing, no matter where you are or what you're doing. Okay? Mm -hmm. Any questions about any of that? Mm -mm. I hit export because we're done. We got basically what we needed here. Export. And it's done. I'm going to drop this down. And I'm going to find my scuba blue folder on my desktop. I think this is it. And in a second, my, my little, uh, I think I'm in the right one. My PDF should pop in here in a minute. I guess it's still, there it is. You see it? Yep. Okay. I'm going to open up Reader. I'll move Reader over so I can see my, my little uh, package here. And I'm going to click and I'm going to drag and drop. And, oh, it's going to give me trouble. Now it's not going to want to read it. And let's try it again. There we go. Now it's in there. Okay. So there you have it. I don't know why I did that. There's my production. And only thing I want to point out is, <clears throat> if you remember what I told you, the printer's marks were indicated so all the printer's marks would appear. So you have your crop marks, you have your uh, bleed marks, and you have your color bar, and you have your grayscale bar, you have your registration marks, and you have your printer information, which is general, generic information on the, uh, on the piece. And then notice that my folds are showing out up because my, my uh, slug area, which was that blue line right at the top there, see it? That's where my slug area is. So, right? Did I do it right? Yes. Does that look correct to you? Yes, it does. Okay. So now do you guys know how to prepare all of your work? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm done. 58. We got two minutes. You got uh, any questions or anything at all? The... The 300 resolution for each picture. Okay. So I'll go back to Photoshop real quick. And let me go file open recent and I'll open diver import. Okay. Image. And I tried to keep changing all the sizes of them. What? what? Well, when I tried to change it, like all the pictures went way bigger. Yeah. You know why? We'll go why? to image, image size. Okay. So here's the image size on this. If you take a look at if you take a look at that picture right now this this is 300 pixels per inch it's four inches wide but if I go view actual pixels oh you know what I gotta get out of here if I go view actual pixels it gets bigger now this okay. is a, this is a fairly small image but if you had a bigger image let me go let me open another one let me go back here and let me see if I can find my uh, that one, the, which one do I want? I think I want this one. All right, let me open that up. Hold on. Let me close that. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Grab this image and drag it in. Okay. okay. Now this image, go to image, image size, 
And this one is, watch this. Okay, this one is, uh, it's 12 inches high by nine inches wide. And this is a resolution of 100, uh, 180 pixels per inch. So if I need this height, height to be, and this resolution is too low, if I, the, the height is now 12 inches. If I need the height to be, let's say, um, eight and a half, I can set this to 8.75. Let's go 8.75. And I can now raise the resolution because I'm actually reducing the size of the image. I can raise that to 300. And I can come down here and I can choose uh, bicubic sharper, best for reduction. So right. now what I'm doing is a 300. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to change the height from, what was it, uh, 12 something? Yeah. To eight. Yeah. I'm making it smaller, but I'm increasing the image data, the resolution. If it is a bigger image, you can make it smaller and increase the resolution. If this image was 8.75 and it was 180 pixels per inch, I could not do what I'm doing because the image is it would have to be made smaller. I cannot increase the resolution and the size. I can only decrease one or the other. And in this particular case, the resolution was 180. I want it to go to 300. In order to do that, I have to make it smaller. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So I hit OK. And there. Now watch when I go view actual pixels. Look at what happens. Is that what you were talking about what happened to you? Yes, the picture got really, really big. Right. But all you have to do is go to the view menu and go fit on screen, and you can bring the image back to size. The reason that that's happening is, think about this. You have an inch, one inch. If you have 72 pixels in one inch, the, uh, the size of, of the space that it takes up is one size. If you have 300 pixels in another inch, it's going to take up more space. You understand the concept? Yeah. Yes. Okay. You got 72 pixels in an inch. It's going to take up a certain amount of space. If you got 300 in an inch, they're the same size pixels. You need more space. So okay. if you have 300 pixels per inch and you have like eight and a half, almost nine inches, there's a heck of a lot more space needed to fit all those pixels in. So that's why your image gets that much bigger because there's more pixel data. We're good? Good. Great. Good. All right. I'm done, and we're over time, so I'm finished. Unless you have any other questions, I am going to end our little meeting for tonight, and thank you all for taking the class with me. I loved having you. We loved having you. Thank you. And uh, you know what? Stop recording.